Welcome to a video I've been wanting to make for a long time. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Bob Taylor, and today we are going to dive back into the RV industry. For those of you that don't know, my grandfather founded Taylor Coach 53 years ago. And I know a lot of you are not going to like this video who are in the RV industry, who camp and have owned many RVs, but when you've been building for 53 years and you have a 27 month wait list for your product, we will sit down and discuss how you build trailers better than I've built trailers for my entire life. I was born, raised, and taught to build RVs with a very simple fundamental. It is never going to be big enough when you're staying in it, and it is never going to be small enough when you're towing it. So everything is about finding a happy medium. This particular trailer I'm in is 26 by 8 feet. That is tip to tongue, not the floor. So the floor obviously is smaller. We've got over 100 gallons of fresh water capacity, 60 gallons of black water capacity, and 38 gallons of gray water capacity in a trailer that weighs 35 500 pounds 3,500 pounds might seem unrealistic and you might be asking me how that transpires well step one build it like they built these other things fairly new invention called the airplane everything needs to be hollow everything needs to be lightweight because you have to tow it down the road that's great you've got MDF cabinets that off gas like crazy and cause people all these great allergies and cancer causing chemicals and, and great but sometimes just getting back to real materials and building things lightweight hollow and strong that will last 50 years is the way to do it it's absolutely fantastic to have a high quality linoleum floor as most RVs do. It's another thing to actually glue the entire thing down. So when you fire up your nice in-floor ducted heat system, you don't get bubbles from the air escaping underneath and causing mold growth. I don't know about you, but less mold definitely makes me feel better. Let's take a quick moment to talk tech. RV's got lots of tech in them now. This particular unit has multiple TVs. We've got your stereo system connected to your cell phone. We've got a Wi-Fi extender, all kinds of goodies. But why is it the basics? We're talking power converter. We're talking the device that takes 110 to 12 volt down here. We're running progressive dynamics so you get a proper charge wizard so you're not just going to boil the fluids out of your battery and destroy your battery while your unit is in storage or parked at your house. You can't get the ABCs right, but they're going to load it with other tech. Does that make any sense? I challenge anybody in any RV to go in and shake off a cabinet. You want to talk strength, you should be able to hang off these things because these things have to hang going down the road and the whole trailer needs to be one structurally sound unit. I'm going to introduce you guys to something relatively uncommon. This is called wood. It is first select plywood so that things last. I hear the topic a lot, stick and tin. These trailers are built out of stick and tin. It is a lighter weight, more customizable way to build things. You don't have these huge tables and CNC machines and etc. But what people don't realize is that when you squish foam, it will lose its structural integrity over time. So when you take a window, which is a sandwich construction design, and you put it in an RV and all RV windows work the same way, what happens to your seal on your window? It obviously will degrade because the foam breaks down. So I get hundreds of phone calls about why my windows are leaking. Do you have fiberglass siding? What year is the coach? Etc. Etc. Or we could just build it to last. I wanted to bring you outside to show you this fancy stuff called aluminum. As you guys know, aluminum is designed to last a long time. This is automotive painted. If it gets damaged, if a truck backs into it with its tailgate down and just puts a giant crease into it, I can take these sheets off and change them in about 20, 25 minutes. I can fix any woodwork underneath if it need be and put it all back together like it never happened. Can't do that with fiberglass. Common misconception with fiberglass siding, it's not actually fiberglass siding. It's actually phylon sheeting. What happens to plastic when you leave it out in the sun? It yellows. Watch the RVs yellow as they age. It's unbelievable. They're not designed to last. Let's take a minute. This is a chassis for a unit ready to be built. It's currently on dummy wheels waiting for the mags, uh, which will be put on once completed. Everybody thinks spring suspension is outdated, but torque flex axles actually give you more of a surfboard effect going down the road where spring suspension lasts a lot longer and gives you a lot truer tow. The underbelly of the trailer might be the most underlooked thing on the trailer. No pun intended, but most trailers come with a plastic membrane underneath, 
we do a one piece aluminum sheet so that mice can't chew through it. When the tanks are mounted on most RVs, they hang off the chassis. When you hang them off the chassis, you leave space for rodents to follow up the tank uh, ABS back up into the trailer and get into your clothing. Doesn't that sound like a good way to start off a weekend? I once had a guy ask me how we stop our hot water heaters from sliding out the side of the trailer during travel. We simply put screws to the wood to keep it properly fastened to the side of the trailer. It's like magic. I once had a customer come in and ask me, does a roof need to leak to activate the roof sealants? We were just at a dealership, we'd just seen it leaking, and that's what they told us. No, I'm pretty sure if you bought a house, a car, or anything with a roof and it leaked, you'd be pissed. So your trailer comes with a 12 year warranty on its vinyl roof. You ever taken an old vinyl jacket and tossed it outside for 12 years? It's going to look horrible. You got to rubber wash and preserve it every year. Have you read the terms to the warranty? How often do you have to take it back, get it inspected? How much money do you have to spend on sealants to keep your warranty up to date? What are the rules of engagement? This is aluminum. This is one piece with minimal maintenance that you can do yourself. This will last 40 years. That's it. That's sitting outside. That's not with a cover. That's not indoor storage. That's nothing. That is nothing special on behalf of the customer. And then there's sealants. You got to touch them up every 18 to 24 months. You got to go in and drop a bundle of cash at the dealership. Get them to scrape and reseal your roof. The silicone needs to be touched up at about the 12 year mark. And by 20 years, you might have half the roof replaced. That doesn't sound too bad to me. Features and longevity aren't everything. What about customization? What about you wanting to add a bigger solar system, remove your AC? Like, like what do you actually want out of a trailer? And who actually offers customization? Thank you very much for watching the video. Don't seem to sound like a negative Nancy, but been doing this a long time. I have fielded some unbelievable questions and there are some unbelievably bad quality floating around in the industry. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to get a discussion going with you or answer your questions. Until next time, drive safe, take care and behave as always.